This is Colorado Zone Channel 2 News Daybreak. Because we got some coffee. Yay! Yes, thank you very much for the coffee, Miss, Mrs. Producers down there. <laughs> Colleen and Nancy, we Colleen owe you. Colleen and Nancy, <laughs> we owe you a lot. Well, we're getting ready, of course, to run. It's Labor Day, and that means it's time to race. To your health, Colorado's own Channel 2 is proud to sponsor the first ever Fortitude 10K race in Fort Collins. It is a nice morning out mm -hmm. here. A little bit cool, but we know that is going to change when the sun comes up yep. very quickly. Good morning. Glad to have you with us for this special edition of Daybreak this morning. I'm Natalie Tistel. And I'm Ernie Bjorkman, and you're taking a look now. We shot some video yesterday of this beautiful new stadium. It's the Sunny Lubick Field at CU Stadium. Of course, in honor of uh, Sonny Lubick, who is uh, a wonderful football coach here at CSU. And... Um, just a beautiful, beautiful facility. It, it took a couple of years to build. It's, it was finished last this July, and now uh, we're sitting right here in the dark at the stadium. It's beautiful. I can't wait for the sun to come up so we can get a full look at the stadium because it's my first time being here. Yes, and uh, it's a little chilly, so the warm coffee helps. It's about you know high 50s, 57, 58 degrees. Beautiful for running, but it's going to get warm. Let's go to Chris Tomer now for the latest forecast. Chris. <laughs> It is. Yeah, Ernie and Natalie, good morning. Yeah, we're just up the street from you. I mean, like maybe two-tenths of a mile at the home stretch, and it is going to be a hot day. We have a cold front on the way this afternoon, but I think we're going to hit 92 before that front hits us this afternoon. Take a look at the forecast here for the 4 to 2 10K today. By 8 a.m., it's already like 70 degrees out here, and there's a lot of smoke in the air up here in Fort Collins as well. And then the wind's going to start to pick up as we head towards lunch, about 80 at 10, and about about 90 by the 90, almost 90 by the time. That's just runners hate heat. I'm a runner and I hate heat as well. But hot and windy this afternoon. If you were to look down the road, you would see a big drop in temperature starting tomorrow. And I will talk more about that coming up. But Ernie, Natalie, back to you guys. All, All right. right. Thank you, Chris. Well, a lot goes into planning a race, of course, like the Fortitude 10K. Oh, so much more than people realize. Yeah. Jim Hooley joins us this morning with a special guest who helped put it all together. Jim? Yeah, you know, these things just don't happen. In fact, we were just talking to some of the people out here that are in charge of some of the volunteers. They've been out here since like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, getting everything all set here from the start line. This is where everybody will start and then head west into town coming up at 8 o'clock this morning. Stephanie right now from Fortitude is with me this morning to give us an idea. It's not too late. If people are watching right now, they want to come down and run. Not too late to get involved. No, not too uh, late at all. Our registration is going to open just past the start line at 6 a.m. We'll be open till 8 a.m. So you can come down and get still get in to any wave you want. Yeah, and you're expecting 10,000 people, roughly? Yeah, we'll see uh, after our registration numbers this morning how many we'll have. But yeah, we're I think we'll have around 7,500 runners today. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. a great day. And you guys do the Boulder Boulder. You've we been do. involved with the Boulder Boulder yeah. now. And I, as I, I was saying, it's kind of like the bookend. You start with the Boulder Boulder, wrap up summer that's, on we, Labor Day. We call it the summer sandwich, you know. So you, <laughs> when you start with Boulder Boulder and end with a 4 to 2 10K. But yeah, we're, we're really excited for this new race. For our staff, most of us have been working on it for a couple of years now so it's yeah. an exciting day for us you know we got a team too believe it or not yeah. channel two's yeah. got the team i have been down there you know training with them every monday they're an awesome team they're gonna do great yeah so, you think yeah. so you think they'll all finish i don't know I'm, I, they're, they're, they're gonna do great they're, a, they're, do, they're, <laughs> they're faster than me i know that well, stephanie you are so kind and good luck to you today when things kick off here Thank you. coming up in just a couple of hours eight o'clock is a kickoff time the pros go at what, about 10 15 right steph uh 10 20 10 20 ish or so so that's all going to be very exciting but yeah everybody getting prepped right now and as Stephanie was saying, it's not too late if you want to come down here and you can still register now for the uh, first ever Fortitude here in Fort Collins. Back to you guys in that one, that, that stadium. I mean, that alone is worth the trip to be able to get down into that stadium and be on the field, right? Oh, you know it. it's gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So, uh, Jim, thank you very much. Uh, again, it does take a lot of people to put this it thing does. together. It does. Be a really part does. of the top part of the sandwich. Boulder, boulder, the bottom part of the sandwich. She said it is the sandwich of the summer. It's the I summer that's sandwich. Funny. I yes, love it. Exactly. Well, no major race like this one would be possible without sponsors. Yeah, of you course. need sponsors, of course. So, when the city of Fort Collins, the organizers of the Boulder, boulder race in Boulder, and CSU all got together, their immediate thoughts turned to just one company. We're obviously 
very tied to the community of Fort Collins. We love it here. So New Belgium, synonymous with Fort Collins, wanted to jump on this proverbial band or beer wagon. So the folks at the Boulder Boulder have created uh, just a, a really unique and community-centric event down in Boulder, and we wanted to bring that up here to our hometown, bring that energy. Of course, New Belgium and its beers, such as Fat Tire, have catapulted the brewery onto the international market scene, making it a giant among craft beer makers. It will be there during the race with fancy fat tire bikes and, for everyone over 21, a can of its new beer, Old Aggie Lager. Which is a new release for us. We just came out with it maybe a month ago. In honor of CSU. Uh, in honor of the partnership with CSU, yeah. So 2017 has been a huge year of partnership with those guys. New Belgium is a founding partner and, of course, beer sponsor of the Fortitude Race, a partnership that's been a year in the making. For a company known for its bicycle races and its fat tire symbols, this was still a no-brainer for the Fort Collins Company. A, a running event kind of um, really plays into our, our love of just an active lifestyle. So we think this is going to be a really cool addition to Labor Day weekend. Um, and yeah, it's just a chance for the community to get together and, and celebrate that active lifestyle. We are live from Fort Collins all morning long, and be sure to watch To Your Health, Colorado's own Fortitude Labor Day special on Channel 2. That's going to be right here starting at 11 o'clock, and we'll go to 11.30. Mm -hmm. And that's just when the uh, pro racers should be coming in, and uh, there's a $28,000 purse to split among the professional racers. There's 55 men and women, and they're probably going to run this 10K Maybe 30, 35 yeah. minutes. Yeah, so we'll see a lot more activity here in the stadium oh, yeah. than we see right, right now. But first, let's get some other news now. Let's go back to Ken and Kim in the Channel 2 studios. Yeah, thanks, you guys. It is 6.06 .06 on this Labor Day, and we do have some important news for you this morning from the White House. 800,000 undocumented immigrants await news of possible policy change. President Trump's decision on the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, also known as DACA, should be official within four. 48 hours. Four sources say an announcement is expected sometime tomorrow and that the plan would have DACA repealed in six months. If repealed, that means many undocumented immigrants who arrived in the country as children could lose protection from deportation. There are 800,000 DACA kids, kids who are brought across the border. The median age, I think, is six years old uh, for those 800,000 when they came across the border. They should not be punished for the sins of their parents. The president's priorities on immigration are to create a system that encourages legal immigration and benefits our economy and American workers. This is a complicated issue and something I'm sure that the president will consider carefully as it relates to the economic impact. Officials from 10 states had said they would give President Trump until September 5th to announce an end to that program. We'll keep you updated on what President Trump has to say. And developing this morning, South Korea has responded to North Korea's latest missile test with its own military exercise, doing a live fire drill. North Korea claims to have developed an advanced hydrogen bomb that could sit on top of one of their missiles. President Donald Trump has hinted that a military strike is possible, but has not said anything specific. Now, new sanctions against the country are already in the works. An emergency UN Security Council meeting will be held later this morning. Well, Colorado's congressional leaders are sounding off after this most recent threatening test. Yeah, Senator Cory Gardner released this statement saying now is the time to take unprecedented steps to stop North Korea. This latest nuclear test by Kim Jong-un may be the clearest sign that we have seen that they are ready and willing to start a nuclear war. Senator Michael Bennett tweeted, North Korea poses a grave threat to our nation's security and to global stability and norms. The president must acknowledge the gravity of the situation, demonstrate leadership, articulate strategy to address the threat alongside international partners. Now, Robert Hazan is a professor at Metro State who's following the North Korea threat. And he says the key is finding creative diplomacy. This is perhaps the time, enough already, this is the time that uh, our leaders have to really address this issue uh, directly. And uh, it has to be through diplomacy. Th it, this is one situation where perhaps there's, there's no other alternative. 
Also, Senator Gardner says that he believes North Korea should be removed from the United Nations. Defense Secretary James Mathis has promised, quote, a massive military response to any threat. And now to the latest from Texas. The Gulf Coast is on its way to recovery after Hurricane Harvey swept through more than a week ago. Houston's mayor says 95% of Houston's electrical grid is operational and most of the businesses will reopen tomorrow. However, many people who are finally able to retu return home are seeing so much devastation, flooding, fallen trees, and damage caused by high winds. Texas governor, he says that it will take years and as much as $180 billion for the region to recover. At least 53 people have died in that storm. And don't forget, Channel 2 is teaming up with the Salvation Army once again. We are going to host a supply drive for the victims of Harvey. It will be this Wednesday. We're collecting just two types of items, either hygiene products like shampoo and toothpaste or baby supplies. The drive is from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And you can drop off items at our station here at 100 East Spear or take them to two Salvation Army stores, one in North Glen, the other in Parker. For more details, check out kwgn.com. And people are now, believe it or not, preparing for yet another hurricane. This one is called Irma. The storm is quickly gaining strength in the Atlantic, threatening the Caribbean and parts of the United States. It is still too early to see exactly what path it will take, but if Irma did make landfall in the U.S., it would be Friday at the very earliest. So stay Six, tuned. Absolutely. 6-11 now on your Labor Day morning. And new this morning, Britain's Prince William and his wife Kate have announced that they are expecting their third child. The oldest is George. He is now four. The announcement came from Kensington Palace early this morning. Duchess Kate is resting because she has a condition that causes severe morning sickness. But that's all the details we have so far. Yeah, but it's really nice. Uh, you know, life comes full circle. We just went through the 20th anniversary of Princess Diana's death. Ooh, yeah. And now to have this great news is, is very exciting. It is 6-11. Still lots coming up on this special edition of Daybreak. Coming up, we'll tell you how Channel 2 Fortitude team, too legit to quit, got in shape for today's big race. Day has broke. Yes, we're excited about that. 6.15 this morning and welcome back. We're excited to have you with us on this special edition of Daybreak this morning to your health, Colorado's own fortitude. Well, we're getting ready to kick things off in just under two hours. Wow, this exciting, exciting. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ernie Bjorkman. And I'm Natalie Tisdall. Let's get a look at your forecast. It is going to heat up for the race and then cool down on Tuesday, right, Chris? No, that's totally the case, Natalie. I mean, so, yeah, we're like at 58 degrees here this morning up here in the Fort Collins area, but it's going to be a hot afternoon, like 90s. Take a look at this. I think we may almost be at 90 by the time we reach the lunch hour today. And the reason it's going to be hot and windy this afternoon is because we actually have a cold front on the way over the next seven days. Look at the temperature drop here tomorrow to 68 degrees, some showers, some heavier cloud cover. So what a difference between today and tomorrow. I want to introduce you to part of the security here, Adam McCambridge. Adam, uh, great to see you here this morning. Thanks for coming. You know, you get a lot of questions about security at an event like this. What can you tell me about security and your role in that? Well, we're providing security uh, throughout the course. Um, obviously, our goal is to make everything as accessible as possible to the public, but to make it as safe as possible also. So, so we have uh, we have protocols in place throughout the entire course from the beginning to the end um, to hopefully allow everybody to have a great time today. Because this, I, I'm just guessing, this is going to be a crowded section. This is like the home stretch. Everybody, you know, running into the stadium. Uh, I mean, what do you anticipate in this area? I mean, a big presence in this area. What kind of you know, there, what are you thinking? There will be a presence. Um, you know, we don't want to be um, kind of too overbearing. So, but there'll be a presence. You may not see us everywhere, but but we'll be here and we'll be around. And and like I said, ensuring the, the safety of all the participants and the observers. All so, right. Well, thank you for coming out today and being you. a part, of making this a success for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. All right, Ken. Back to you in the studio, my friend. Yeah, it's going to be a great day up there, Chris. Uh, Weather-wise, but like you said, you know, if you're going to be in and around, you better watch yourself. The course map is going to be the spot to avoid. Uh, this is a live look at current conditions. Look how hazy. 
easy it is. Uh, you know, all that smoke in the air from those wildfires that continue to burn. That might be a factor for uh, racers later on today. But we've got a good start as far as problems go. We're really not tracking much. Uh, this is a live look at that Fort Collins area. Everything is essentially west of 25. So Mountain Avenue in and around the stadium, uh, that is where you're going to find that course set up. And obviously everybody's going to be on it and it's going to be busy as a result. Uh, Metro Denver, Labor Day, it, it is quiet through the city. No major problems. It's still incredibly early around town. Uh, crews are still set up for the Taste of Colorado. So down near Civic Center Park, you are still going to have those uh, roads that are blocked. Uh, but no major problems getting into the city. Right now, Ernie and Natalie, we have yet to even have a stall on this Monday morning. So it's a great way to start. All right, Ken, thank you very much. Hey, we're bigger than life right here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ken. <laughs> All right, Channel 2's 42 team, of course, they are called too legit to quit. And they've been practicing going through drills, exercises for the last couple of months. We have watched them and enjoyed watching. Mm -hmm. Next time we need to jump in. Maybe next year. Yeah, when we don't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna Canals gives us a look at the team and shows us how they bonded over their weeks of training together for the race. I feel like I can conquer this. <laughs> core, my back. No more excuses. My rear, all of those challenging areas. I will never let my team down. It's been a fun eight weeks training for the Fortitude 10K. The team called Too Legit to Quit, consisting of Channel 2 on-air personalities. Employees across the body, and three Channel 2 viewers, Sonia, Paula, and Terry. I ran, but then I got kind of out of shape, so I'm trying to get back into it. Everyone had different goals depending on the start line. I think this has been awesome. It's a jump start that I needed. So, are you guys ready for the fortitude? No. <laughs> We got a couple of weeks, right? Definitely been some sweat and some pain and some pain and some sweat. Our team logged running miles at home and station workouts consisted of cross training like the plate workout, urban sessions, lots of dynamic stretching and core, core and more core. If you have a good strong core, everything else is going to um, sort of follow in from that. The running has become longer, stronger and so have the friendships. There's peer group pressure here. Knowing that I have that many people holding me accountable motivates me. I'm like, no, I'm hitting that pavement. I'm feeling the love. You make new friends along the course and people that you run with and everybody's very encouraging. We're sweating together, you know, you get down and dirty together. Friendships, sweat, blood, and tears. Any advice for people that are trying to take video while they're running along with their friends, like with this right here? <laughs> Don't do it, maybe? Don't do it. <laughs> Mike, I hope you're okay. We went through it all. Too legit to quit! Woo! Where to go, guys? Where to go? You know, and I think it's important to note here that you don't have to run the entire race. I mean, my wife's in it today. She's going to walk some. She's going to run some. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to run full blast for yeah. the whole mile. Yeah. You know, okay, so here's a question for you. Yeah. You've, me, you, Tomer, we've got Jim Hooley. Uh, who would win? Ooh. I, <laughs> there is like let, no question. <laughs> yeah, Tomer climbs 14ers every weekend. I think he would outpace us. I know. He would win. It's who would come in second. That's the big I, question. I think you would too. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> We're going to be back live from Fort Collins coming up in just a few minutes. See you in just a minute. <laughs> I better start training. Welcome back to our special edition of Daybreak, the Fortitude Edition this morning. We are joined this morning by Steve Bosley, the founder of the Boulder Boulder Race, of course, the people behind Fortitude. Good to see you this morning, Steve. Good morning. This has been a long time coming. How long ago did you start the thought process for Fortitude? Well, my son Cliff is the director of the race, <clears throat> and uh, uh, Gary Ozello from uh, CSU approached him four years ago. In fact, almost four years to the day, and uh, had we'd never expanded. This is the first time the Boulder Boulder has stepped outside. 
And it's been 38 years of uh, success. 39. Those, 39 Coming up on 40. years. Almost 40 years almost for Boulder. 40 years. Boulder. Yes. So you certainly have the experience. You've been named the best 10K race in the country for the Boulder Boulder, correct? That's right. So you've learned a lot of lessons along the way. You've done an excellent job with the Boulder Boulder. What have you taken from that to bring here to Fortitude? Absolute attention to detail, no matter how small it is. Absolute commitment to the customer, to the runner, to the participant, walker, runner, jogger, doesn't matter. And community involvement, uh, representing your sponsors properly, representing the community properly. When you get this big, both here and at Boulder, you have a commitment to the community. Um, you have to do it right. And that's our commitment. And that makes it special. I mean, that makes it fun for everyone involved, not just those participating in the race, but everyone in the community. It does. Yeah. It's a community event a term grossly overused, but absolutely the case here. Yeah, Steve, thanks for joining us early this morning. Best of luck. We know it's going to go off flawlessly. We're really happy to be a part of it, too. We're glad you're a part of it. So thank you. Good to see you this morning. And congratulations on all your success. We'll be back in just a minute. To your health, Colorado Zone Channel 2 brings you the Fortitude 10K, live from Fort Collins. All right, a live look. A live look at kind of the part of the race here where it's going to end up in the beautiful new CSU Stadium. Isn't that gorgeous? You don't see people there right now, but in just an hour and a half, two hours, yeah. about 8,000 people we're going to see taking that course. And we're excited to be a part of it this morning. Good morning and welcome back to the special edition of Daybreak. Yeah, right behind us, as you can see, the word finish. That's the finish line. They're going to come through the stadium on the north side, come around and finish right there. It's going to be a beautiful spectacle. It really will be. I'm Bernie Bjorkman. Thanks for joining us live in Fort Collins. And good morning. I'm Natalie Tistel. Chris Tomer's out here with us in Fort Collins checking out your forecast for the race and for the week ahead. Chris. Uh, you, Ernie, you cracked me up, man. Or it says finish. That's the finish line over there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so we're in the beast over here, about a two-tenths of a mile from you guys, just outside the stadium on the final stretch. The current temperature, though, this morning, we're looking at 60 in Fort Collins. It is 62 in Denver, looking at 68 in the Boulder area. As far as a forecast goes today for the 4 to 2 10K, up to 70 at 8. It'll be, well, smoky, very smoky sunshine. About 80 at 10, and already almost 90 hot and windy this afternoon. That's before a cold front barrels in here this afternoon. Tomorrow will be totally different. Let me show you the smoke in the air this morning. You know, I've been looking around. There is just a lot of smoke. The visibility up here is certainly lower. This is all from Montana and up in the Pacific Northwest. So more reports to come from uh, here at the Beast. All right, Ernie, Natalie, back to you guys. And just in case you weren't listening earlier, Tomer, we've decided you would be the winner amongst our team here if we were running the race. <laughs> no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I no think Jim Hooley would be right in there, though. Yeah, he's got some good legs on him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Jim? Ernie said he got uh, some yeah, good legs on you. Uh, uh, good, yeah, skinny old Irish white legs. That's why That's why I got the jeans on here. I'm not showing any, any leg off uh, this morning. It's actually a little chilly for me out here. i got to tell you, it's beautiful, though, for the runners as they get ready. There's a clock right there. You can see the countdown clock, 632, almost 33. Now we're ready to go here at the start line coming up at 8 o'clock this morning. And of course, half the fun is all the entertainment that's going to be going on here on the course. Chris Kay is the man, the entertainment coordinator here for Fortitude. And I imagine this has been a, probably a, a project that you've worked on a long time, getting all the music and stuff together, right? A good solid four months worth. Wow. Pull it all together, yeah. yeah. How many bands do you have lined up? I've got uh, 12 bands and a 
couple of DJs and we've got a cheerleading troupe from uh, Northridge High over in Greeley. So pretty fair amount of entertainment. Yeah, and much like the Boulder Boulder, I mean, a lot of people just come out and run or walk right. just for the entertainment itself, correct? Uh, well, I don't know about that, but I hope they enjoy oh, the on. entertainment. Yeah, it definitely will be. But as you well know, when you do something like this, the entertainment, the music is a big part of it. It and, is. And, and it must drive people. Yeah, it does. You know, I, I, my first experience was Boulder Boulder, and we had over 30 acts on that course. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit trimmed down, but the entertainment is a huge part of it, as I've learned this year. This is my first year working on this event, so it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and you got your shorts on. You're I showing do. off your skinny white legs. That's right. right. Yep, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah. brother. A little chilly out here. All right, Chris K., thank you very much. My Congratulations pleasure. on a great job. Thanks. Hey, we're all set to go. Like we said, 8 o'clock, right here at the Star Line. We're getting ready for the Fort Attitude. We got the Star Line. You guys got the finish line. Nice. That's right. Chris, All you right. can see the word right behind us, finish. <laughs> oh, wait, where did it go? <laughs> hey, there Jim, yeah. keep those uh, jeans on, okay? <laughs> no shorts for you today. <laughs> you need them right now, but it is going to warm up. We know that for sure. Well, a firefighter, along with a piece of one of the I-beams from the Twin Towers of 9-11, will be recognized today as part of the Fortitude 10K race. Yeah, it's a wonderful journey. Brian Hansen of the Pooter Fire Authority was part of a team from Colorado that helped in the recovery effort right after the tragedy of 9-11. It took a while, but two years ago, word finally came that he could have a piece of a metal girder. He and some friends, along with a truck and a trailer, made the long trip to New York to bring it all back here to Fort Collins. There wasn't a single overpass that didn't have somebody, emergency equipment, flags hanging off there, people waving to us when I went by. Um, people lined up on the roadway at 6 o'clock in the morning. Every time we stopped for fuel, there would be 100 people that would come over. They wanted to shake our hands. They wanted to give us hugs, um, you know, shed a tear with us. And Brian still gets very emotional as he talks about this. From New York to Colorado, Hansen says they got a police police escort every mile of the mm -hmm. way. The piece of history is now draped with an American flag. It's awaiting its permanent home. Plans are in shape right now to get this memorial built. It should be built by this time next year in front of Firehouse Number 3 wow. here in Fort Collins. Wow. And it'll be a permanent reminder of what happened on that terrible day of 9-11. Pretty cool. That yeah, so he's going to be honored here. today for those efforts, and he deserves it because it'll be a beautiful, permanent memorial Look at in that. Fort Collins. All right, we are live from Fort Collins all morning long. Happy to be here, so be sure to watch To Your Health Colorado's Own Fortitude Labor Day special on Channel 2. That's going to be at 11 o'clock today, and we're going to go through the half hour at 11.30, so you will yeah. see the stadium here at CSU fill up, and the sun is coming up this morning. It is a pretty morning here. Yes, we're about an hour and 23 minutes away from the official start of the first Fortitude 10K race. But let's go back to Ken and Kim in our Channel 2 studios. All right, guys, thank you very much. It is a pretty day up there and a lot of excitement building as we get Absolutely. closer to Absolutely. The Unfortunately, there's a lot of smoke and haze out yeah, there, though. Yeah, those fires. Yeah. All right, it is 636, and we do have some news to get to this morning. Happening right now, state troopers are investigating a rollover crash that injured four people, including a child in Telluride. The San Miguel County Sheriff's Office says seven people were in the car and no one was wearing a seatbelt. Now, the crash happened along Black Bear Road yesterday afternoon, and as you can see there, it is a very narrow road. According to the Sheriff's Office, the 66-year-old driver told them he blacked out while driving. He may have actually choked on some water. No drugs or alcohol are suspected here, and the sheriff says the family is, quote, incredibly lucky. Well, if you are looking for some of the natural beauty here in Colorado, a 14er might not actually be the place you want to go. And here's the reason. The climbing community says that trash is becoming a huge problem on the peaks, especially those cardboard signs that people take the summit photos with. Those signs are being left behind for the next person to use. However, nobody takes that sign back down. Food wrappers, human waste, and toilet paper also commonly found on these trails. Many of the climbers suspect there is more trash because there are now more people hiking Colorado's 14ers. I personally am so happy that more people are getting to experience our mountains and getting out and enjoying the Colorado lifestyle. On the other side, we're all going up there to experience the nature and it really takes away from it when you see things that aren't natural. She brings up an excellent point. So if you bring anything into the backcountry with you, you must bring it back with you. Pack it in, pack it out. 
Trash doesn't decompose easily at those higher elevations, and that does include human waste. Also this morning, the hunt is still on for a man accused of kidnapping his ex-girlfriend and her son. Both these victims were found safe this weekend following an Amber Alert. You probably got that on your phone. Investigators say this is the abductor. They're looking for Mauricio Venzor Gonzalez. Investigators say he may have shaved his head, so he could look a little different than he does in this photo. The suspect was last spotted at the Evans Street RTD station Friday afternoon, but he did get away. Detectives say Gonzalez could be anywhere and he does have a criminal record in both Adams and Arapahoe counties. If you see him, you are asked to call 911 or that number on your screen. 6.39 now on this Labor Day morning, and Colorado rescue groups are now stepping up to help hundreds of homeless animals from Houston. Yeah, this is a really serious situation. Hurricane Harvey damaged many of the shelters that were housing these cats and dogs, and some of them will be available for adoption soon right here in Denver. Amanda Zitzman is live with more on the need and how you can help out. Amanda? Jim Hooley, Fox 31. Well, before they do put the animals up for adoption, they do know that we need more volunteers, and they definitely need some foster families as well. We have at least 400 of these dogs and cats coming from Houston here to Colorado, and there are over 20 local rescue groups participating in this, including Max Fund located here in downtown Denver, one of a couple of groups that brought in some of the animals yesterday afternoon. You know, late last night, 50 homeless dogs arrived in Lone Tree with Mile High Labrador. Most of them, as you can see, are puppies. They are so cute, and they really do need foster families for these guys. Right now, now rescue groups work in a tag, chip, and clean them all up. And just hours earlier, Max Fund here arrived with eight dogs and 27 cats. You know, most of these animals have been in Houston shelters for months now, but the shelters also need to make room for the animals that were displaced by the hurricane. So they are asking other states to open their hearts, open their homes, and help out. Even if you can only help one, you're you're saving a life of an animal. So I just think it's it's kind of nice for us to have a wake up call to see um, that they can't do it without us. So most of the pets will be put up for adoption soon. We don't have an exact timeline just yet. Right now, the rescue groups are still looking for cargo vans. They need volunteers as well, dog walkers. They'll be doing transports from Houston to Denver, they say, for another few months. So if you would like to help out in any capacity, we have all of those details on our website, kwgn.com. For now, live in downtown Denver, Amanda Zitzman, Channel 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you. I'm sure lots of people will show up for that. And another way you can help, Channel 2 is teaming up with the Salvation Army once again to host a supply drive for the victims of Harvey. It will be this Wednesday. We're collecting two types of items, hygiene products, shampoo, toothpaste, things like that, and then baby supplies. The drive is from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesday, and you can drop off your items here at the station at 100 East Spear, or you can take them to two Salvation Army stores, one in North Glen, the other in Parker. We do have more details on kwgn.com, and we're sure that you're just generosity will be greatly appreciated and noticed once again. Oh, absolutely. Well, lots coming up on Daybreak. We've got all your coverage of the inaugural 42 10K in Fort Collins. Natalie and Ernie are out there. They will be joining us live in just a few minutes. And those of us who decided not to run are back here in Denver. Are we the three most out of shape people in the building? What's going on? Why aren't we running? Entertainment this morning on this first outfit of fall morning. Got a lot of cool movie stuff going on. Stick around. road right now is going to be filled with runners very mm. soon. Welcome back to this special edition of Daybreak. We're live in Fort Collins where in a little over an hour, the first leg of the Fortitude 10K will be taking off. Yeah, there's something like 22 waves of runners and they're going to go off about every minute. So by about 8.20, 8.22, we'll have all the amateur runners. And then at 10.20, 10.24, the professional runners, all 55 of them, men and women, will take off. And uh, they should finish the course in about a half hour. So when we come back on live at 11 o'clock this morning, we should have these uh, big 
professional runners coming through the, the finish line. Very so, exciting. You yeah. just saw the start where we have Jim mm -hmm. Hooley live, and then we are right here at right over Ernie's shoulder at the finish, the finish line. line. Oh, is it over here? <laughs> it's right over there where we are in the new beautiful stadium uh, here at CSU. Yeah, the sun's up now so you can have a nice view behind us here. The uh, new Belgium porch is back there where people can watch the game and have some adult beverages and enjoy a beautiful football stadium. Anyway, I'm Ernie Bjorkman. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. I'm Natalie Tistel and Chris Tomer is here in Fort Collins with us as well where it's been a little bit chilly this morning, a little bit of a haze here in Fort Collins. Are we seeing that throughout <laughs> yes. Colorado? Chris. Uh, it's a lot of the front range, Natalie. Uh, this is all smoke from up in Montana and the Pacific Northwest. It is noticeable. That's for sure this morning up here in Fort Collins. Yeah, we're at like 58, 60 degrees right now. 60 Fort Collins. Denver's at 62. Boulder sitting at about uh, 68 degrees. So the forecast for the rest of the morning and towards lunch for the, the Fortitude race, uh, already 70. So we're going to warm up fast by 8 a.m. Should be fine. Just smoke Smoky skies, 10 a.m. about 80. It's going to be a hot afternoon. Uh, about 90 by lunch. The high today, 92 degrees. Smoky. It does turn gusty this afternoon because a strong cold front is moving in. Now, let me show you the effects of this cold front. We'll go from 92 today to 68 tomorrow with a lot of cloud cover and a chance of showers. And then you can see the temperatures start to warm back up by the weekend, both Saturday, Sunday, 20% chance of afternoon storms. There's a lot going on down here. I've been saying I'm on the home stretch. This is the last two tenths of a mile before you hit uh, this, the new stadium down there where Ernie and Natalie are at this morning. There's a lot going on on this street. We've got a couple of uh, setups over here with a looks like a hot air balloon. We've got a couple of skydivers and a, I believe a hang glider getting things set up. They were asking me about some of the wind conditions for this afternoon and I told them it is going to be a gusty afternoon so it's probably good they're doing it this morning. All right guys, uh, Ken, back to you in the studio. Gosh, what a beautiful day up there. If it was just not so hazy, well, this is a look at the race route. Everything in green. Uh, it's green for the runners. It's basically red for everybody else. So it, uh, as you can see, the finish line there at the stadium, the start line there over on Elizabeth, and then it winds through City Park. Mountain Avenue is going to see a lot of uh, traffic, as will a lot of those other side streets. The good news is, as we take a live look at current conditions across I-25 up near Mountain Vista, Obviously, it being Labor Day, very little traffic across the freeways. We're not seeing any major delays even in the city of Fort Collins itself. These are current conditions, I-25 being right through here. So the race is going to have its fair share of delays for anybody through the Fort Collins area. But, you know, right now, if you're just getting up and out and you have to go to work, there's not much to slow you down here in Metro Denver. It's equally as quiet. Taste of Colorado still set up down near Civic Center. We've got uh, one stall up against the west side of town across 470. But there are very few problems to be had this morning here at Metro Denver. So we've got a good start. Ernie and Natalie will continue to track it throughout the morning and bring you the very latest if this situation does change. All right, Ken, thank you very much. Well, the 42 10K is attracting world-class runners, including one highly decorated runner from Fort Collins. Yeah, she lives right here. Libby James embodies what fortitude really stands for. She's won more world titles in her age bracket than any other amateur runner. take you into the bathroom to see the big one? You know it's going to be a fun and interesting day spent with 81-year-old Libby James of Fort Collins, a world-renowned runner at her age, countless wins and trophies, but the big one, as she says, is used to hold soap in her bathroom. And this is a beautiful trophy. <laughs> <laughs> and you use it as a soap holder. I do, That's because where are you going to put it? My house is very small. That is gorgeous. Yeah. So what it, you it's a double, double road race. Double, double meaning she won both a 10K and a 5K back to back on the same day. Just one of the many accomplishments of this very young senior citizen who got the bug decades ago while getting her master's degree. I think I read an article somewhere that said the first hundred miles is the hardest. And I just started running. And she hasn't quit. In fact, she now holds a fistful of world records. Well, I know that I have, in the 80 to 84 age group, I have the 5K and the 15K and probably the 10K. And that's not counting the world record she set in her 70s. And as she ages, her advice to any of us, don't stop moving. I think what's important, particularly as you get older, is being consistent about it. Because if you quit for 
Even four or five days, it's really hard to get back at it. That's why Libby and a group of friends run every day through the streets of Fort Collins. And for daughter, state legislator Jenny James Arndt, all this is really not surprising. It's that attitude of you just get up every day and keep moving and you work hard and you do the right thing. And James is doing the right thing again as she runs in this new race called Fortitude. You're going to be in the inaugural Fortitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exciting. And you're going to try to win your... Uh, your age group? Yeah. Although, they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. I won't say anything. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> She's she, humble, too. She, yeah, she doesn't want to brag too much, <laughs> but uh, she will probably win her age group again. And she'll probably beat a lot of others much younger than her oh, as gosh. well. Oh, gosh. Exactly. You know that. I, I, loved, I loved the beginning. She said, come look at my biggest trophy, and it's in her bathroom. You had soap in there. <laughs> I said, I'd have that thing on the mantle. Yes. <laughs> and and she, great advice, too. Consistency. Just yeah. get up every day and do it. Do it. Yeah. Well, of course, we've been telling you about the uh, team from Channel 2 uh, who are actually running this race. They're called Too Legit to Quit. Too Legit to Quit, yes. And I think we have video of them making their way. Uh, well, first of all, there they are training. They've been working about six to eight weeks. Yes. They've been training together. Every Monday, together. they would uh, have a certain trainer come in and show them some moves and stretches, and, which is so very important before a race like this. And here they are on making their way up to Fort Collins. There's Mike Bars at the helm there. Oh, Mike, get him here safely. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> We just he wanted will. to get here on time. He's drinking they coffee. Okay? There they are. Yeah, they're leaving there. That's uh, Lincoln and about to get on to Spear and then I-25. So <laughs> they'll get up here in time. They've, they're not going to miss this one. No, they're not. We can't wait to see them here along with so many others All making right. their we'll way up. We'll check in, morning. of course, when they arrive. Uh, at the start, just a little more than, what? Uh, There's Deb. About an hour hour from now. Yep, I saw Deb Takahara there. Oh, yes. Uh, leading the team. All right, let's go back into the studio with Ken and Kim with a look at some of our news today. Yeah, they yeah. did just take off. They should be up there in no time, guys. Well, it's now 6.53 here. The rumors over the weekend are true. Brock Osweiler is back. What? I know. <laughs> You even know who he is, Chris? Yes, I have his jersey. Oh, sure he does. Uh, he's expected to start the regular season now as Trevor Simeon's backup. Yeah, the reaction here is mixed in Denver. Just 18 months ago, the Broncos lost a bidding war to Houston to keep Osweiler in Broncos orange and blue. Well, now he's back at a very small fraction of the cost. The Broncos will pay just $775,000 of Osweiler's $16 million salary. The rest is going to be picked up by the Browns, who just cut Osweiler. The Broncos also trying to sign quarterback Kyle Sloter to the team's practice squad, but they lost a bidding war with the Minnesota Vikings. The former Northern Colorado Bear will make $20,000 per week, which is three times the amount of the average NFL practice squad player. And, of course, we also uh, lost T.J. Ward. He was released and picked up by the yeah, Buccaneers. Yeah, but you know, if you, if you keep the jerseys long enough, they'll come back. That's why I still it's got... It's not like yeah. fashion. I got my Tim Tebow. <laughs> I got, my Eric, I got my Eric Decker, come back. and I got my Peyton Manning. I feel like all those guys could come back at a, hat, at a drop of a hat. Hmm. Not yeah, sure yeah. how many share that opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think they share that opinion. <laughs> well, speaking of Peyton Manning, I do still have the jersey. Should have worn it this weekend out there at Fiddler's Green, because Peyton Manning was on stage with his buddy Dirk Bentley. There he is getting out in front of a fake airplane singing, getting drunk on a plane with Dirks there at Fiddler's Green. I figured this would happen. Elvis, too. He's gotten into the habit of singing on stage lately. And, of course, he and Dirks are good buddies. Remember their fishing trip up there in Alaska where <laughs> instead of helping Peyton Manning, Dirks just took the picture where there's a family of, like, angry bears behind. <laughs> you see those little dots back there? Yeah. Those are bears. Anyway, Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. Yeah, his comment Omaha. is he was wondering if he should inform Peyton yeah. that they were back there. Why ruin a good photo? Why ruin a good photo? All right, there you have it. That is the shortest entertainment in the history of man, but really all you care about is Peyton Manning on a morning like this, right? Right. There you go. It's good to Fun see you. Stuff. Thank you. Great surprise for people out there. All right, stay with us. In the next hour, we are back out in Fort Collins, just an hour away from the start of the first ever Fortitude 10K.